The top killers in the United States are heart disease, cancer, and stroke. Starting out of nowhere just a few decades ago, and now is the sixth leading cause of death in the United States. What is it? Alzheimer's disease. Hi. In this video, I'll be describing what Alzheimer's disease is, and what seems to be the best ways to prevent and treat it. Last week I was watching Dr. Michael Greger's hour-long lecture called From Table to Able, Combating Disabling Diseases with Food. And I was fascinated by the difference that a plant-based diet can make to our health. In particular, I was interested in Alzheimer's disease. Who cares if you live to be 100 if in the final years you don't recognize yourself in the mirror? So I looked up more videos by Dr. Greger to see what else he had found on the subject. And so I'll include some excerpts from that in this video. In addition, VegSource uploaded a video with Dr. Neil Bernard lecturing about the benefits of a plant-based diet and some other ways to prevent Alzheimer's disease. So I recommend watching the whole lecture for more detail, but I'll just summarize a bit of that in this video. Alzheimer's disease is the most common form of dementia. It damages the brain, resulting in impaired memory, thinking, and behavior. The brain is fed and provided with oxygen by a complex network of arteries, veins, and capillaries. This vascular network is strictly controlled and segregates the brain from the rest of the bloodstream. The blood-brain barrier protects the brain from infection, but if the brain becomes infected, it is difficult to treat because antibiotics are too large in their molecular structure to cross the blood-brain barrier. This is a problem when finding agents to treat Alzheimer's disease, as they must pass this barrier to target the brain. Our brains form a million new connections every second that we're alive. It is in these connections that memories are stored, habits learned, and personalities shaped. Going back to the 1900s, Dr. Alzheimer examined the brain of his patient, Mrs. Dieter, upon her death. He found shrinking of the outer layer, or the cortex, the region of the brain involved in memory, language, and judgment. Dr. Alzheimer also found two types of deposits in Dieter's brain. One kind was found outside the brain cells, which are known as plaques, and the other type of deposit was found inside the brain cells, known as neurofibrillary tangles. The plaques impair synapses, so signals can't pass between the brain cells. Tangles kill brain cells by preventing the normal transport of food and energy around the brain cell. As brain cells die, the brain shrinks, which can be detected by magnetic resonance imaging. The outer part of the brain is usually the area affected first by the disease. Short-term memory loss is therefore one of the first symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. But as the disease progresses to deeper parts of the brain, long-term memory is also lost. The disease also affects many of the brain's other functions, and consequently many other aspects of behaviour are disturbed. Both Dr. Michael Greger and Dr. Neil Bernard assert that lifestyle factors, and especially diet, goes a long way in preventing Alzheimer's disease and slowing its progression. This is what cerebral arteries should look like, open clean, allowing blood to flow. This is what atherosclerosis in our brain arteries looks like. Clogged with fat and cholesterol, closing off the artery, restricting blood flow within our brain. This reduction in blood flow can starve the brain of oxygen, causing these silent little mini strokes, brain atrophy, shrinkage. The cumulative effects appear to play a pivotal role in the development of Alzheimer's. What about the so-called Alzheimer's gene, APOE4? Diet trumps genes. The highest frequency of Alzheimer's gene in the world is Nigeria, but they also have some of the lowest Alzheimer's rates. To understand why, one has to understand the role of APOE. What does the gene do? The Alzheimer's gene makes the principal cholesterol carrier in the brain. But if your cholesterol is low enough, because your diet is low enough in animal fat, if you center your diet around grains and vegetables, then changes in cholesterol can lead to changes in gene expression. 
Just because we've been dealt some bad genetic cards doesn't mean we can't reshuffle the deck with diet. If you follow people who are just starting to lose their mental faculties, the cognition of those with the least artery clogging in their brain remains pretty stable over the years. But those with more cholesterol buildup got worse, and those with the most blockage rapidly declined. And the same with the ability to carry out uh, activities of daily living, like dressing oneself. Uh, and arterial disease doubled the progression to Alzheimer's. In summary, an inefficient blood supply to the brain can have very grave consequences on brain function. But does treatment of vascular risk factors, like high blood pressure, high cholesterol, uh, make a difference? We didn't know. Until now, 300 patients with Alzheimer's and those with their vascular risk factors treated showed significantly less decline, slowed progression of their disease. According to the latest guidelines for the prevention of Alzheimer's, the two most important things we can do is cut down our consumption of meat, dairy, and junk and replace them with vegetables, beans, fruits, and whole grains. That's the best science we have. The prevalence of dementia in Japan has shot up over the last few decades. Mechanisms to explain this in Japan include increases in cholesterol, saturated fat, and iron from increases in the consumption of animal products. Traditional diets generally are weighted towards vegetable products, such as grains, and away from animal products. But since 1960, the diet in Japan has changed from a more traditional rice-based diet to one with a preponderance of meat. From 1961 to 2008, meat and animal fat increased considerably, whereas the rice supply dropped. The dietary factor most strongly associated with the rise in Alzheimer's disease in Japan was the increased consumption of animal fat. A similar analysis in China arrived at the same conclusion. On the basis of these findings, the rate of Alzheimer's disease and dementia will continue to rise unless dietary patterns change to those with less reliance on animal products. This is consistent with data showing that those who eat vegetarian appear two to three times less likely to become demented, and the longer one eats meat-free, the lower the associated risk of dementia. Globally, the lowest validated rates of Alzheimer's in the world are rural India, where they eat low meat, high grain, high bean, high carb diets. A whole foods plant-based diet, which is naturally low in iron, copper, saturated fats and trans fats, and higher in vitamin E and other antioxidants, is a powerful way to reduce the risk of getting Alzheimer's disease. Dr. Greger also found that saffron and berries have additional benefits for the prevention and treatment of Alzheimer's disease. It was a double-blind randomized trial measuring cognitive dysfunction in Alzheimer's patients comparing saffron to placebo. So what did they find? You give Alzheimer's patients placebo capsules, and as you can see, their cognitive dysfunction gets worse over time. That's what happens in Alzheimer's. You get worse and worse until you die. Unless, it appears, you spice up your life with a little saffron. Conclusion. This double-blind, placebo-controlled study suggests that at least in the short term, 16 weeks, saffron is both safe and effective in mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease. Well, fruits and vegetables help reduce the risk of other chronic diseases. Might they work for brain diseases as well? There's been a proliferation of recent interest in plant polyphenols as agents in the treatment of dementia. There are 4,000 different kinds found ubiquitously in foods of plant origin, but berries are packed with them. Uh, possessing powerful antioxidant, anti-inflammatory properties. And there's a subset of a subset called anthocyanidins, natural blue-purple pigments, uniquely and specifically capable of both crossing the blood-brain barrier and localizing inside brain regions involved in learning and memory. And that's where we need it. Uh, the brain 
takes up less than like 2% of the body weight, but may burn up to 50% of the body's fuel, creating a potential firestorm of free radicals. So maybe these brain-seeking phytonutrients in berries could fight oxidation, inflammation, and increase blood flow. Blueberry supplementation improves memory in older adults, suggesting that consistent supplementation with blueberries may offer an approach to forestall or mitigate brain degeneration with age. What other blue-purple foods can we try? Concord grape juice had a similar benefit, improving verbal learning, uh, suggesting that supplementation with purple grape juice may enhance cognitive function in older adults with early memory decline. The first population-based evidence that greater intakes of blueberries and strawberries were highly associated with slower rates of cognitive decline, and not just by a little bit. The magnitude of associations were equivalent to the cognitive difference that one might observe in women up to two and a half years apart in age. In other words, women with higher intake of berries appeared to have delayed cognitive aging by as much as two and a half years. For even more protection, combine a healthy plant-based diet with other lifestyle factors, such as sufficient sleep, regular exercise, effective stress management, mental stimulation, and avoidance of drugs when possible. I hope you found this video interesting. Feel free to like and share it, and I'll see you in my next video.